All right, ladies and gentlemen, in this one, we're going to go ahead and create this really cool low poly island scene where we have animated fish and animated water and all of this. This is going to be super cool. We're going to do this in two parts. In the first one, we're going to make the beach and the water. And in the next part, we'll make all of the different assets. So with that, I'm going to go to a new scene over here. All right, so here in a new scene, let's go ahead and delete the cube. We're going to hit Shift A, get a mesh plane, and in edit mode, go ahead and hit S 10 and scale it up 10 times. And then we're going to right click, subdivide. In the bottom left, let's increase the number of cuts to 10. And then right click, subdivide again, and increase it to 3. All right, so now that we got this, we're going to Alt left click twice around the border so that we get the whole border. And we're going to hit the E key, Z, and bring this down a little bit like this. This is going to be the sand and the island. Then in object mode, just hit Shift D, duplicate this, bring it up like this. This is going to be the water. And in edit mode, I'm going to hit G, Z, and bring the water down to the sand. Now don't worry if it's intersecting right now, we'll fix that later. All right, so now that we got that, let's go back to our sand or our island, which is this first one right here. I'm gonna hit tab to go into edit mode, O to turn on proportional editing. Let's go ahead and select a vertex around here and hit G and Z and scroll your mouse wheel up to increase the proportion. And we are just gonna go ahead and extrude, or not extrude out, but bring up wherever we want the island. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that up right there and maybe a little bit more right here and right here as well in the back. So go ahead and bring up the island however you want. So something like this. All right, very cool. Now that we've done that, you can see that right here it's all deformed. So I'm gonna hit the O key, turn off proportional editing, Alt left click, select the whole bounding loop, S Z zero, and just straighten it. And if you need to bring it down, go ahead and bring it down a little bit. All right, there we go. So now we got that. Very cool. So now we have the water right here, which is just this right here. And we have the sand and the island. Now let's go ahead and add some materials for this. Let's go to material preview. I'm going to drag out a new window and go to the shader editor. So for this, let's select the water first, which is this top one. I'm going to click on new. Let's name it water. Be like water, my friend. And over here, we're just going to go ahead and start off with the basic water. So first of all, obviously, I want this to be transparent. Let's go to the material tab right here. I'm going to turn on screen space refraction right here. I'm going to change the shadow mode to none. And then in the render properties, I'm going to turn on screen space reflections and refraction right here. Then I'm also going to turn the transmission to one. So this is how you get it to work in Eevee. In cycles, it will just work once you put the transmission to one. So now we got this right here, a transparent kind of cube. Let's bring the roughness almost all the way to zero. So maybe a 0 0.05 or so or 0 0.04 or something like that. And there we go, we now have some water. Let's give it a bluish color. So right here, bluish color. And now I want ripples at the top of the water so that it simulates waves or the rippling of the water. For that, out of the normal, let's go ahead and get a bump node. And out of the height, let's get a noise texture. So right here, you can see that with this noise texture, it's going to be everywhere on the water, which is not what we want. As you can see, it's on the sides and the top. We only want it to be on the top and not the sides. So here, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control T with Node Wrangler enabled to add a texture coordinate and mapping node. And let's leave it to generated. So now we need to create a mask that is going to mask out the sides right here. So to do that, I'm going to hit Shift A get a separate XYZ, connect the vector to the vector, and let's control shift left click to the Z right here. So now you can see that we have this here. I'm gonna hit shift A, get a color ramp. And now we wanna bring this black slider all the way up 
so that basically we have this black mask around the sides where it's going to remove the bump. So just bring this as close as you can to right there. All right, then we need to mix these two together. So you can see if I control shift left click the color ramp, I have this. If I control shift left click the noise texture, I have this right here. So I'm gonna hit shift A, add a mix color right here and drop that in. I'm going to go ahead and put the noise texture on slot B and the color of the color ramp on slot A. So now it's mixing these two together, but mixing is not what I want. I want to go ahead and change this from mix to multiply. So let's go ahead and get the multiply. And what this is going to do, again, keep in mind that a color that is black is a value of zero and a color that is white is a value of one. So now if we increase the factor to one, you can see what we got here. Again, it's taking all of the black values right here and multiplying the noise texture by zero and taking all the white values here and multiplying the noise texture by one. So you can see that everything on the side is going to be zero because again, zero times anything is going to be zero. So everything's black. And then here where it's white, it's going to be one times whatever is the noise, which is just going to be the noise, as you can see right there. Because again, on the noise texture, we have values between zero and one, again, black and white, and one times any of those values is just going to be the same. So now we have this here. And if we plug this multiply into the height instead, you can see that now, if I control shift left click this, we will have bumps only on the top, but not the bottom. How awesome is that? Very, very cool. All right, so now that we got that, we wanna go ahead and make the foam for the water. To do that, let's hit tab to go into edit mode of the water. I'm just going to go ahead, let's turn on proportional editing, and I'm going to grab a vertex that's next to the island and hit the G key and scroll my mouse wheel down a little bit and bring it up and forward. So you wanna bring it up and forward and make it so that it's high enough above the original water. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this one here. G, bring it up and move it forward. This one right here, or this one right here. G, bring it up and forward. And this one right here, G, bring it up and move it forward. So just like that and maybe a little bit more subtle right there. And there we go. Again, make sure to move it up and forward into the mound. All right, very cool. So now that we got that, let's also right click shade smooth our water. We need to add foam here. To do that, once again, we need to create a mask. So for this mask, we're just going to use a similar method that we used right here. We're actually going to go ahead and select both the separate XYZ and the color ramp. You could hit Control Shift D to keep it linked. However, I can't do that because of my recording software. So I'm just gonna hit Shift D and connect this back up right here. So if we Control Shift left click this, once again, we have this mask here. And you could see that if I bring the black slider down a little bit, we have this right here. So what we want is we want where the foam is going to be to be a white color. I'm gonna bring the white slider down a little bit. So something like that. And maybe I'm gonna raise this also. So bring this up and over. So right here, you can feel free to adjust this how you want, however much foam you want. Again, I want it something like that right here. And now we have a mask for the foam. So with this, let's go ahead and get a mix shader so mix shader and right here let's drop it in we're going to plug this new color ramp into the factor right here and then right here the first shader is going to be anything that is black on this color ramp and the bottom shader is going to be anything that is white on this color ramp so let's plug this principled bsdf which is the water into the first one which again will be anything that is black on that color ramp that we made. And this bottom one is going to be the foam. So right here out of this bottom one, let's get a principled BSDF. And here, let's bring this down. Now here for the foam, I'm gonna change the base color. Let's get a Voronoi texture right here for the foam. 
And with the Voronoi texture, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the object of this texture coordinate into the vector here. Since we don't really need a mapping node, since we're not using it anyways, it doesn't matter. All right, let's change the scale of this to like 50 right here. So now you can see we have a lot of small little foam particles. Now with this, I wanna distort these a little bit, which is something I didn't do in the original render, but I kind of like it better. So here I'm gonna get a mixed color right there. And out of B, I'm going to get a noise texture right here. Now let's go ahead and plug this same object into the vector here. So now what this is going to do, let's also change it from mix to linear light here on the uh, mix color node. What it's going to do now is a factor of zero is going to take the original vectors right here. And so they are not distorted. And a factor of one is going to take these vectors that are distorted through the noise texture. So as we start to increase this factor, you can see it distorts them with this noise texture. We could also change the scale and the different values on the noise texture. I'm gonna put the detail to 15. I'm just gonna leave the scale at five. So now with this, I'm just gonna distort it a little bit, maybe a 0.2 or so. That way we get this kind of look. All right, now this foam is a little bit too white right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Shift A, get a color ramp and drop this after the Voronoi texture. And I'm going to go ahead and hover my mouse over the blue ocean color, Control C to copy, go to this black color, Control V and paste that there. And then I'm going to invert the color ramp. So flip color ramp, and I'm gonna bring the blue in a little bit more like that. So now we got that right there. Now you can see that the ripples on the water have disappeared. And so over here, if we take a look at our color ramp, let's control shift left click this first color ramp that we made. You can see that everything is black. So we need to bring this back until we get some white right there and bring the white here. So all of the top should be white and just the sides should be black. So now if I control shift left click this mix shader, you can see that we got the ripples back and we got the foam right here. All right, very cool. Now with the foam, let's take this bump right here from the water and plug this into the foam as well. All right, nice. I'm also gonna put the roughness on the foam down a little bit, not as much as the water, but a little bit right there. All right, so now we got the water and the foam. Very cool. Let's get the sand now. So I'm gonna select this, click new. We'll name it sand. And for this, it's gonna be very easy. We're gonna go to the base color, drag out a noise texture right here. I'm gonna hit Control T, mapping texture coordinate. And let's change this to object right here. So now we got that. I'm gonna go ahead and after the noise texture, drop a color ramp so that we could get our sand color. And of course, we don't want black or white. I'm gonna change this to a sand color right there. Control C to copy. Control V to paste it into the white color and scroll my mouse wheel down to make it a little darker. All right, very cool. I'm then going to go ahead and increase the detail to 15 and put the roughness up a little bit like so. Then out of the normal right here, let's get a bump and we're gonna plug the factor into the height right here to get some bump because the magic as always is in the bump. It's way too strong though. Let's put the distance to 0 0.02 or maybe 0 0.04, something like that. Very cool. Let's also go ahead and put this roughness. I'm gonna put it down a little bit so that the sand is a little bit shiny and reflective, like so. And there we go. Now we need the wet sand. So for the wet sand, we're going to do a similar trick that we did for the water. Let's get a separate XYZ. Right here, we're gonna hit Control T, mapping texture coordinate. You could go ahead and remove the image texture. I'm not sure why it adds it there. We don't need it. And then right here, we're gonna change this to generated right there. And Control Shift left click until you get to the Z. Now with the Z, let's go ahead and we're going to put the Z location 
we're going to bring this to a negative until we get the black color at the start of our island right there. So right there. Then we're going to get a color ramp to control this a little bit more. So color ramp. And let's bring the white slider down to contrast it. Again, where the black is is going to be where the wet sand is. Where the white is is going to be the dry sand. So there we go, right there. And you can see what we have. Now I want to distort this. Obviously, I don't want it to be a perfectly straight line. So once again, get a mix color node. Drop it before the separate XYZ. Drag out a noise texture from B. Noise texture. And plug in the vector into the vector. Let's go ahead and change this from mix to linear light right here. And once again, factor of zero will be the original vectors right here. And as we bring it closer to one, it will distort it with this noise. So let's bring this up a little bit. We could change the scale as well to kind of change that, as you can see right there. I'm also going to change the color ramp right here from linear to constant so that we get a sharper kind of look like that. And then right here, go ahead and change this to however you want. I'm just going to put it to a really low number, so something like a three or so, so that we get this kind of uh, wiggly kind of this kind of look right here, whatever it's called. This kind of uneven line right here. Very cool. So now what we need to do is we need to make the wet sand. So for that, we're just going to, after the color ramp, let's get a mix color node right here and drop it here. So right here, once again, A is going to be the black parts of our map. So you can see the black part is right here and the white part is here. So A right here is going to be the wet sand and B is going to be the dry sand. So for this, let's just plug the color into B as well. So right now, everything is going to be the same. You can see if I plug the color into the factor to control this, everything is the same because we have both of the same colors plugged into here. But if I get a RGB curves and drop this in the A socket right there, let me go ahead and expand this. So right here in the A socket, again, that is the wet sand. If I bring this down, you can see it will darken that sand. How awesome is that? So here I'm going to go ahead and just bring it to however dark I want. So adjust this however you want. So I'm going to put it to something like that right there. And now we have the water, the foam, the dry sand, and the wet sand. How awesome is that? All right, make sure to save. In the next one, we will wrap this up. We're going to make all the assets, the fish, and we are going to animate the wet sand, the foam, the fish, and the water. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now. Au revoir.